Look at that guys, that is a beautiful machine right there. I'm Andrew with BBT Welding and uh, today we're going to be having a look at this really awesome machine here. This is a Lincoln 350MP um, with the Python gun on it. So we're going to go over the specifications and features on this machine and uh, so let's go ahead and get into that. Alright guys, to start with the, my favorite part of the machine. This is the Python push-pull gun and uh, as it implies, let me open this up a little bit here. This has another set of drive rollers right in the handle of the gun. And uh, for those that don't know, aluminum wire is obviously softer than steel wire since aluminum is a soft metal. And you need to have another set of drive rollers to be able to pull that through the gun. If you had a gun like this, which is uh, just a standard gun, no rollers, you wouldn't be able to push that through the liner, especially on a 15 foot or you know, much less a 25 foot gun. So this helps out a lot. This gun is very expensive though. It's about $1,700 last time I priced one out. Um, the machine itself is right around $4,500. So all that adds up to a lot of expensive. And, uh, but you do get your money's worth out of it. And we'll go ahead and go over it. Um, you do have the capability of running a spool gun with this, but I don't know why you want to since you can have the push-pull gun. Uh, the machine itself is incredibly uh, smart as a semi-synergic machine. Um, you have some non-synergic settings, but most of them are synergic. Um, you can do steel um, with the standard gun, which I have hanging on the wall back there. Um, you can do stainless. I've done a lot of stainless with this machine. Um, a lot of quarter inch and one inch stainless bar, and it's incredibly well uh, doing it. <laughs> it does incredibly well with stainless. Um, I mainly have this machine set up to do uh, aluminum and uh, it does really good at that too. I'll go into the, the features um, of the double pulse and uh, whatnot later, but it does um, a lot of things and it doesn't take a whole lot to do it um, input wise. So let me go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, I'll kind of show you guys some of the features. So right now I have it set on program 99 and basically what that is is it's a um, double pulse setting here and uh, what it is for is 45 thousandths wire and uh, so what, all you have to do to adjust this is you go to the gun here and on the bottom of the gun it has this little tab here that can be pulled off and uh, see if I can do this one handed. You can pull that off like so, it's just a little piece of plastic and it's got this dial in here and basically by rotating this dial you change the output of the machine and since the machine is synergic um, just changing this one number changes both the voltage and the wire feed and so if I take it up to 200 here 200 does about 3 eighths of an inch of aluminum pretty easily and uh, so this machine has quite a bit of capability um, when it comes to that and uh, so I'll go ahead and show you some other stuff. Um, Pre-flow and post-flow. And I've got five seconds of pre-flow. And I've got about, uh, well, I've got half a second of pre-flow. Go down one more. I've got five seconds of post-flow. Um, this is just run in. You can't change it up here for whatever reason, but uh, this is the start. And you can change it up here. You can crank up the power and uh, turn it down or whatnot. And you got arc control here. And basically, what that does is it keeps the arc from wandering around and stuff. Um, it does a good job of it. And uh, I've used that quite a bit when we were doing the stainless welding because some of the stainless wasn't really clean. Um, you got crater. I've got a half a second of crater at 100. Um, it's got burn back, which is off. Um, because just with the crater it helps keep the 
the uh, wire back on naturally. And we also have spot which is off because I hardly ever do spot welding with this. But anyway, um, I don't have time to go through all the programs with this machine, but we will <clears throat> we will be doing uh, aluminum welding with this in this uh, video. So um, we'll go ahead and get into that. Uh, we have this set up right now with a pigtail for the ground lead, and I have a short six foot cable for that. Why not cable? So let's go ahead and do some welds with this thing. So I did these all at different uh, different settings. This last one here, I did it at uh, 107 with 130 start and a uh, three quarter a second uh, crater fill at 85. And uh, I did these over here um, at the same setting, but I uh, I just drug it instead of doing a uh, weave motion. Um, I did do a beat underneath this before that too with a slight. Um, movement and on the other side here I did some um, at higher uh, settings I did these here at 100 and, uh, 140 and 130 and uh, those were just like I said slight movements here and uh, I, uh, I kind of I had to um, try it out first to see because I haven't welded on uh, this thin of aluminum in a little while so, um, basically, my favorite setting for this machine is double pulse, and it's supposed to give a, uh, a MIG-like TIG uh, bead appearance, and with this thin of a material here, um, it doesn't work as well, but on a thicker material, like say a 3 16 or a quarter inch, um, it would show up better, but as you can see here, I mean, these beads look pretty good. Um, you can see the, 
the uh, cleaning action around the bead. And uh, you can see there's very little soot on these beads here. And they're all tied in very well. Um, the craters uh, could have been filled better on these here. And so that's why I cranked the crater fill up to three quarters of a second instead of a half a second. And I reduced the uh, power input um, at that duration. But uh, this machine here performs extremely well on aluminum. And uh, stainless steel was pretty good too. We had uh, similar uh, performances with the bead. Um, the hot start and the crater fill work very nice, especially on uh, something like stainless steel where it's important to have shielding gas coverage too. Um, with the post flow and the pre flow settings on that machine, you can get them in very well. Now, some features on this machine that come with it stock. You've got the standard MIG gun here. It's a pretty good MIG gun. It's the uh, step above the one that's on my 256. It's uh, capable of uh, roughly 300 amps, 60% duty cycle. And uh, this gun over here is the step below it. Um, like I said, this one here is a 250 amp, 60% duty cycle. And uh, this machine also comes with a regulator. It's your standard um, Harris regulator. This machine also has two solenoids. Um, if you happen to have a dual tank rack or have a tank sitting next to it. Um, and one, like I said, is for the machine itself. And it runs into this gun here. And the other one is down here for, like I said, like a spool gun or probably a TIG torch will run through this too. Um, so that's nice so you don't have to keep switching back and forth. And uh, it makes it really easy to uh, run multiple processes with this machine. Um, a few other things too is it comes with a storage area which is quite large. I'm moving my wrench in here. And uh, it's also lockable. I've got all this stuff in here for guns and whatnot in the manual. And uh, that comes in very handy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's got uh, plenty of stuff to get started with. You know, just throw a tank and some wire in there and you're good to go. Um, this machine feeds between uh, 45 thousandths and all the way down to 25 thousandths if you have the right rollers. Um, so it's a very versatile machine. This machine is you know, and the name it says MP, and that means multi-process. Basically what you can do with this machine is you can um, DC TIG weld and you can stick weld with it. You can see up here it says TIG welding and stick welding. Um, you can do quite a bit with this machine. Um, you can't weld aluminum with it uh, when you're TIG welding, but uh, you can MIG weld aluminum uh, with a spool gun or a push-pull gun. Now, uh, like I said, it's got non-synergic MIG modes and it's got synergic MIG modes. It's a very versatile machine. It does pulse. Um, it's very capable of spray arc. And uh, they gave you a, a good table over here of um, all the different parameters uh, if you're going to use this machine uh, with the synergic turned off. Um, you got outputs here for uh, a foot pedal and you got um, another output here for a push-pull gun or a spool gun. And you get a toggle switch here for um, your gun selection. Um, and the main advantage to this machine is the ability to throw this big spool of wire on here uh, versus having to deal with these spools of wire here, these little ones. You can weld all day with this thing and not uh, run out of wire. Um, but anyway, it's uh, very similar in appearance to my 256 here. They're pretty much brothers. Um, that one over there has just uh, got more features. This one here I've had for the same amount of time that that has been around. Um, they're both three years old and uh, I really like them both. Like I said, it's got so many different modes here. We can't really do them all in today's video, but I'm going to uh, try to make videos on stainless and on steel. And uh, I mean, aluminum 5356 shouldn't be any different than what this is. It's just, you know, slightly different. Uh, material composition but we will do steel and stainless we'll do some stick welding and we'll eventually uh, set it up for some TIG welding too but uh, those are in future videos so I want to thank you guys for watching um, please rate comment and subscribe for more and uh, we'll see you in the next